Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarninspirations.com. Today we're going to do the Toast and Egg Pot Holder. And this is a really neat idea and I'm going to be doing something slightly different in my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you some new ideas that are consistent with this. We're still going to follow the pattern. But today we're going to be needing some Lily Sugar and Cream Yarn. So this is 100% cotton. So anything for the kitchen whether it comes to heat or being wet, cotton yarn 100% is the way to go and Sugar Lily and Cream is something that you can count on. So you're gonna need some colors today. You're going to need the warm brown. You're gonna need the jute color, white and yellow. And so it's gonna be a really cool idea and let's get started and look at the pattern more carefully. So let's take a closer look at the toast and egg here and what we have is one layer of yarn that is the toast and then we have another layer here which is the egg which is part of the egg yolk as well. So this layer plus this layer gives you the thickness that you need in order for you to be able to grab a pot. So it's just you wanna grab it, you wanna keep your hands safe. But what I would recommend if it were me and I were you, you have to get this brown anyway and this is the only part that you use the brown on. So why not make two layers of toast and then put them together with the border just like so, so that you have it so that it's double the thickness of the bread plus the yolk. So here's an example and I did the bread as a backdrop. So I did darker brown and so this is the bread and what it's gonna look like and I'm gonna do the other bread that's gonna go on top and when I do the border I'm going to crochet around putting them together so that it doubles the thickness so that I can be safe with my hands. So let's get started. We need to make a piece of toast. So what I'm gonna do for myself is that I already made the backdrop. So using your warm brown just like you see you have enough of it if you bought the yarn to do this entire trio. You have enough to be able to do a backing. So this will be the back part of my toast and now I'm gonna grab my jute color and I'm going to form the front post of the, uh, piece of the toast. So I haven't done the border on this one here and I obviously have to do the border on this one but what I'm gonna do is when I get to this part level here with this yarn is that I'm gonna do a border around both of them and put them together so that they are sandwiched together. So let's uh, grab our jute yarn now and let's begin working and making a piece of toast. It's really quite easy today. So let's make a piece of toast and we're going to use a slip knot to begin. Remember that never counts as one when it's on the crochet hook just like you see now. So what's gonna happen is that we're going to chain 20. So let's do that. So just roll that hook back and start counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So let's get started today. You're going to need a four millimeter size G crochet hook in order to play and then just grab your cotton yarn and let's create a slip knot to begin. So now we're going to just chain and remember the one on the hook when the first slip knot never counts as one. So let's chain 20 together. So 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So let's start our first row. There's actually not too many rows to do as far as like uh, differences. So we're going to go fourth chain from the hook. So count it back on the from the hook. So one, two, three, turn it over and get the back loop only and I want you to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. And so just double crochet as normal and then continue to move along the chain just once one chain gets one double crochet all the way to the other side. So just double crochet yourself all the way across the chain. I'll see you at the end of this chain. So I'm coming up all the way to the end of the chain. I have one more to go and then I'm gonna turn my work and then begin. So the next one is row number two. So when we turn and work we just turn okay and the first chain three counts as the first double crochet. So one, two and three and now I just want you to double crochet one double crochet in every stitch. So just come to the next one and start double crocheting. So the trick to this is, and like any afghan we see a ton of comments with people not finishing their rows at the same at uh, the right level and they end up uh, losing or gaining stitches depending on 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 how they're looking at things. So what you have to do is that when you get to the end of this chain or at the end of this row make sure that you get every stitch in and don't lose any stitches and I'll show you that in just a moment. So this is actually really quite an easy pattern. So this is row number two of nine that you have to do. So you just have to continue to do this row um, completely until you get to row number nine. 
and then you can just count out. So the first one is one, two, and then you keep on doing that until you get up to number nine. And then we do the top level of the toast with giving it the round edges. That is as typical that you would see in homemade bread. So once you get to the other side, just watch your stitches. This is a turning chain that's right on the end. So don't forget that. So you have one, two, and three into the turning chain. So you just keep on going. People skip that and so therefore they end up missing stitches because they think right now is where the end is but it's technically in the turning chain. So don't go into this gap. Go right into the chain itself and double crochet and that just includes that one in. Okay so, so you won't lose any stitches and you can see it's still perfect going up which is what it should be. So just turning your work, chain up three and then just one double crochet in each stitch going all the way across and just watch out for the turning chain at the end. And I'll see you back here get rows one through nine all the way done. So I'm now technically on number three and I'll see you back here in just a few minutes. It won't take you very long to get up that high and I'll see you there. So now I'm at the point of the tutorial where I have nine rows complete. So I can count them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what's missing? It's those scallops, right? There's two of them at the top and if you look at my other piece that I'm gonna put in behind, you can see that there's a scallop right here. So that's what we're gonna do and this is the final row and let's do that next. So don't let the word scallop confuse you or mess you up in any way but it's really quite easy. So right in the first stitch this counting as one and then two and three and I want you to go to the fourth one over and I want you to treble and to treble you wrap that hook twice before going into that same stitch. So just going in, pull through, pull through two and two and two all the way back up. You wanna do a total of seven of those into that same stitch and that creates that turn that is at the top of the toast. So this is two, this is three, this is four and it's five, six and seven. So there is the top of the one side. I'm gonna redo that seventh. I dropped the stitch by accident and I dropped the strand. So now you're gonna come back down in the project and you're gonna skip three. So one, two, and three go to the fourth and I want you to slip stitch into that stitch. So just pull through and through and slip stitch two more times. So just going into the next stitch, pull through and through and next stitch, pull through and through. And so now we're gonna do the other side of the toast that has that raised up. So wrap the hook twice and skip three. So one, two, and three go to the fourth and I want you to treble how many times do you think? It's seven just like the other side. So it's treble seven times. Okay, so there's my seventh and all you just need to do is you skip the next three. So one, two, and three and look you're right in the end of that one here and you go right into the turning chain itself and slip stitch and you're done. So there is the top of my toast. So now I'm just gonna trim my yarn and I'm gonna use a darning needle to be able to uh, fasten these ends in. So just pull it through the loop and finish that off. So now you have the top of your toast here that has the top here and it's actually really quite easy to do. So let's just grab a darning needle and let me show you how to get rid of the loose ends. So grabbing a darning needle I want you to put the yarn that is left over through the eye of the needle. And in, in anything that you do when it comes to crochet projects if you fasten in the yarn and you go in and you push it in, uh, go in one direction just right underneath the stitches. Don't impede that outside. Okay so just going right up underneath. Just go across about an inch. Now cotton is very strong and sometimes getting a needle through can be a little difficult but that's a good thing especially if you're using this kind of yarn for scrubbing dishes. So pull on through and then I want you to go back in the other direction that you just came from through a slightly different path and that's number two and then I want you to go back one more time in the other direction for number three. So if you put your work in or your tails in in three different directions like I'm doing right now, it'll never fall out on you. Okay, so once you get that in, 
then you can just safely trim it down to the project. So what I want you to do is I want you to take care of your tails. So go to the other side, take care of the bottom one. If you're gonna double layer toast like mine, then go to that one as well. So make sure you make a double, an extra layer of toast before moving on to the border. And if you're plan on doing that because then you're gonna sandwich them together and therefore you'll have double layers to help protect your hands when you're grabbing onto a pot. So get rid of your loose ends now and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So at this point in the tutorial I'm improvising from what the pattern says to do. So if you're doing it like this and you don't wanna do two layers, okay, just continue on and if you're doing two layers I'm gonna show you what to do with that. So this is, these are both the right sides. So what I wanna do is that I wanna turn this one over so that the wrong side is facing up and this is the wrong side and I wanna put those together. So this is my layer of toast. Okay, so what I want to do is that when I go to put these together is that I'm going to go around both of the layers at the same time in order to create the border. But you can still do the border with just one layer of toast if you want to. That's completely up to you. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start off in the bottom section and work our way across. And so let's uh, turn it over and we're just gonna come across. So even if it's just one layer, you're still gonna do the same thing. So let's create a slip knot to begin. And what I want to do is that I want to go into the top corner right here. Okay, so just going into the front one. Now if you're doing two layers right now, is that I'm going to just grab the other one now too, the same spot. So that I'm grabbing both at the same time. And what I want to do is just fix it with a slip stitch. And then chain up one and then coming into the exact same stitch, I want to single crochet. So now when I go across, I'm gonna just go to the next stitch on the front one and I'm gonna go to the next stitch on the back one. Okay, and so basically I'm putting those together. Okay, so I'm just single crocheting across. Now if you're just doing one layer, you still do the same thing. You just don't have to worry about the one that's in the back. So this is going to create the actual border which is the crest of your toast. So on the back side you see it's all coming together as one. So continue to do that. I'll meet you at the first corner and I'll show you what to do at that point. So I'm now approaching the first corner and you can see the two sections are now together here as I go. And again if you're only using one layer don't, don't worry about that. And so now I'm coming to the very final one on the front here and uh, I wanna get the very final one on the back if I'm putting it together. And in the corners there's gonna be three single crochets into the same one. So that was one and two and three and that will give you a nice rounded edge in the corners. And now we need to work up 21 stitches from here all the way to the top section here before we start going up over top. And so we just have to eye this out. Now I recommend don't go into a gapping space. Go right into an actual chain first. So you'll notice that there is nine rows here and there's 21. So it's approximately three single crochets per row. So just go right into a chain itself don't go into a gap because that'll open up the gap and then just I, on the back side just match it to the same spot in order to put those together. Okay, so just keep on matching and getting as close as 21. Now nothing ever attaches to this particular border from this point so even if you're off by one or two, uh, there's really gonna be no police to, in order to stop you from doing so. So you can actually get away with a little bit of uh, <laughs> your own uh, personality. But make sure that you are lining them, lining them up. Make sure they don't get out of sync from each other. So if one starts to uh, be like, like this and you're running out of stitches on one versus the other then you know you're in trouble. So just carefully just put them together and go all the way around and once you get to the top here you're just gonna come across and I'll show you how to get there. So just eye it up all the way up and I'll see you back there in just a moment. So now I work my way up and now the next stitch here is the treble. So again you're gonna match your trebles together on both sides if you're doing it the same way I am. And you wanna count them. There's a total of seven. So the first um, three have to be by themselves of just a single crochet into each one of them. Okay, so the, here's the third. And now the fourth one up, the middle one of the, the group of seven is going to have three single crochets into the same one. So here's this one two and three and that gives you that nice edge that you want at the top. And now you're gonna work down the other side of that group of trebles and again matching those on there if you're putting them together. Again you're still doing the same thing if you are 
just one layer of toast as well. So you're gonna continue just to go and match these as you go across. So now the slip stitches are getting something, are getting a single crochet. And now I'm starting to work up the treble. So the first treble in and matching the treble that's on the back. So the first three are gonna be one each by itself. And then the fourth one is going to have three in there. So one, two, and three. And then working down the other side. So what I want you to do is that I want you to continue now working down the other side with equally spacing. There is again approximately 21 stitches. So now that we have that we're gonna just come down the other side and equally space it and then once you get to the other side you can fasten off. So I'm gonna rely on you to do that now. So just continue just to equally space them and single crochet yourself down again the other side. And I'll see you down at the bottom in just a moment. So as you come all the way around remember that we started off with one single crochet in the first one. Well we're gonna end up back there in just a moment and that one already has one so therefore we have to put two in there um, this time around. So we're gonna put two into the final one which is the same one at the beginning. So that allows you to turn that corner on that side. So we just only put in one the when we first started. So one and two. Like so and then I want you to join it to the first single crochet with the slip stitch. Just like that. So therefore you're done. So now take this yarn and you are now going to just throw it onto a darning needle and just weave it in your ends. So just pull it through the loop first just to lock it. So it's now locked and throw it through your darning needle and weave it in and out. So right now because it's double layered like this you could use the, the toast as a pot holder very easily because it's double layered to keep it off your hands. But if you want it the original what we're gonna do next is that we're gonna move on to the yoke. Uh, for those that wanna continue to do that and for those that wanna stop here, um, don't stab yourself. <laughs> um, then this is a good way to go. Either way you are the artist, you are the creator. You do what makes you happy. So now at this point when I turn it over I get the back part of the toast which looks like the end piece of the toast I guess that people don't necessarily want. Um, I know that as a kid uh, nobody wanted that piece of the toast and now you got the front part just like you see here. <laughs>